because we are coming from Philippians 4, 11 through 12 on this morning, where it states, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever states I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And verse 13 goes on to say, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. But let me go back to verse 11. It says, I, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. See, one of the things that we have to realize on this morning is we don't need to get caught up in what we don't have. Don't get caught up in what we don't have. Because as you get caught up in, as we get caught up in what we don't have, we will end up complaining. And in complaining, we will end up sitting up there looking at our circumstance, looking at our situation and say, God, how did I end up here? Why am I here? Why is this happening? How is this happening? But let me tell you this, how we act and how we react depends upon our mindset of the situation. Because if we have the mind of Christ, if we look at things through God's eyes, then we don't have to be concerned about what's coming in around us. What's going on around us? We can sit up there and say, come hell or come high water. God is still God and he still sits high upon the throne. And we have to sit up there and say, you know what? I got to lay hands on my own mind. I got to pray over my own self. I got to sit up there and fast and go before the Lord because I face things right now that I never thought I would face in my life. And you're sitting up there telling me, enjoy the ride. How in the world am I going to be able to enjoy this ride? And let me tell you this. We have forgotten as a people what it was like to struggle. Because we, oh, let me put it this way. We all remember what it was like before we could go to the corner store and get an ice pop. Yeah, we would end up taking Kool-Aid packs, make our own ice pops using a Kool-Aid pack, some tap water, a popsicle stick, and an ice tray. And for some of us, we would put a little extra sugar in it because we wanted it to be that much more sweet. Yeah, that's how we would make an ice pop. Oh, next thing you know, oh, you got a quarter, you got a quarter, we'd end up going to the corner store and putting our money together, 50 cent, and go get ourselves something to drink. Or we would end up sitting up there, go out there and sell newspapers. We would do whatever we got to do to get whatever we need to get because we understood what it was like to struggle. We understood what it was like to have to save a dollar here, save a penny there, to sit up there and save and do what we need to do to get what we need to get. But right now, we have gotten to the place where we have, hmm, where life has gotten soft. We have gotten easy with life for some of us. For some of us, yeah, we can go to the ATM, do what we need to do. We can go to the bank account. We can go to mm -hmm, our money that's hidden underneath the mattress that nobody knows about. We can go wherever we need to go to get the money. We can sit up there and wake up and look at our phone, know and see what's going on in the world. But take all those conveniences away from you. All those things that we have made our life comfortable. Take all of those things away from you as it's going on right now. How do you deal with life now? Do you still know how to hustle? Do you still know how to make a dollar out of change? 
Do you still know how to make a meal out of a mint? Do you still know how to sit up there and say, you know what? I can put cardboard in the bottom of my shoes. I can still look in the refrigerator and make a meal out of whatever's in there. I'm not going to say I don't have this. I don't have that. Oh, we got to sit up there and get back to the old days. We got to sit up there and get back to the old days where we knew what it was like, where we had to put this together. And we had to put that together. Because we look at it like this with some of us now. If we don't get what we want, when we want, how we want it, we have a complete meltdown. We have a complete meltdown. We might as well call it all off because I don't have what I want when I want it. And we sit up there and say, forget it. I'm not doing anything. What happened to sitting up there trying to struggle to get what you need to get? What happened to sitting up there pushing to do what you need to do? What happened to saying, you know what? I'm not going to let this one stop me. I'm not going to let that one stop me. You tell me that I can't. And I tell you that I can You tell me that I won't I tell you that I will You tell me that I won't have I tell you I shall have I will do it I am a survivor You don't think that I'm able to make it out of this I'm telling you right here and right now, even if I contract the virus, I'm still going to make it out of it because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I will survive. I will thrive. Because we also have to look at it. Even if we are saved, we will still complain sometimes. Saints of God, that's on the line. Sometimes we will still complain. We will all have a moment where we will throw up our hands and we will sit up there and say, God, I'm your child. Why am I going through this? I sit up there and come to church. I pay my tithes. I give an offering. I'm helping the poor. I'm helping this one. I'm helping that one. I'm doing good. And yet and still, I'm still going through this. I'm still going through that. But God says, I have given you what you need to go through it. I have put in you what you need to get through it. All you have to do is just rely on me. Just remember what I did for you in the past. I'm able to do it for you in the present, and I'm going to keep you in the future. So I would advise each and every one of us, instead of complaining, praise God. Instead of complaining, worship God. Instead of calling in... Mm, Instead of throwing in the towel, throw your hands up and give God the glory. Instead of cussing somebody out, bless them in the name of the Lord. Instead of thinking about me, myself, and I, sit up there and say, what can I do to help my neighbor? We're in this together. Because let me put it to you in another way. Instead of complaining about the hand you were dealt Win with that hand. Instead of complaining about the hand that you were dealt, win with that hand. Because I'm here to tell you right now, and I know you are listening. You give your hand to somebody else, oh, they will definitely win with that hand. They will not sit up there and complain. And I'd even tell us to look at, mm, look at somebody else's circumstance. Look at somebody else's situation. When you look at what they're going through, you'll sit up there and say, you know what? Mm -hmm, I think about it. My circumstance and situation is not as bad as theirs is. I'm, I'm going through, but I'm going through this circumstance. They're going through. They're going through their circumstance. But God can bless me in the midst of my circumstance, in the middle of what I'm going through. So I'm not going to complain about what was dealt unto me. I'm going to sit up here and do what I got to do to get through what I'm going to get through. Because if I had to deal with what you're dealing with, I would not be able to get through it. Because every circumstance and every situation that we face in this life is created and designed just for each and every one of us. 
It's a time of testing. It's a time of growth. It's a time of understanding. And why do you say understanding? Why do you say growth? Because we will learn from our circumstances. We will learn from our situations. We will learn what to do. We will learn what not to do. And from that, we will get an understanding. And we will not repeat what we have been through. Why? Because if I know that an oven is hot after I got finished cooking, I'm not going to sit up there and I touched it. I'm not going to turn around and touch the oven again when it is hot because I know that I am going to end up burning myself. If I did it before and I burnt myself, why would I turn around and do it again? What we face and how we face and how we go through is not there to kill us. It's not there to destroy us. It's there to make us better. It's there to make us better. Because I would even ask or tell us on today that we need to watch what comes out of our mouth. Because as we already stated, we end up complaining about circumstances and situations. We end up saying this, that, and the other about it. But God says you got to watch what comes out of your mouth. Because let me put it to you this way. We don't realize that the more we speak it, the more we succumb to it. The more we speak it, the more it infects us. The more we speak it, the more it affects us. The more we speak it, the more it affects us. It ends up going into our mind. It affects our outlook. It affects our disposition. It affects our attitude. It affects our language. It affects our body language. It affects everything about us. If we say, I'm going to make it, then we have the attitude, we have the posture that I'm going to make it. If we say that I'm not going to make it, then we will end up having the attitude and the posture that I'm not going to make it. But we have to make up in our own mind. We have to be convinced in our own mind that I will, I can get through this. Because in Romans 10 and 17, it states this. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And let's reverse it. Because as you speak, as you hear the word of God, it increases your faith. As you hear and you see the things that God can and will do, it increases your faith. As you are on social media and you see how people have had asked others to pray for them when they were sick with the coronavirus, they ended up getting healed. You can be, we can be encouraged. And our faith can be increased by that circumstance. But if we continue to constantly and consistently complain about it and give in to what is mm, the spirit that is permeating the nation of fear and anxiety, then you will be caught up in that spirit. You will wonder why you are sitting up there closing the windows, closing the blinds. It's not because you want to stay at home. It's because you are depressed, because you have anxiety. It affects your whole outlook. What comes out of your mouth will infect your body. You look at how you talk to your wife. You look at how you talk to your husband. They will respond. You look at how you talk to your kids. They will respond to how you talk to them. What you call out of them is what they will become. If you tell them that you act like you're no good, nappy-headed daddy, then that's what they're going to act like. If you tell them that you, mm -hmm. if you tell them that you test mattresses just like your mama, then that's what they're going to do. The words that come out of your mouth have power. 
But if you tell them you are the smartest boy on this planet Earth, you have an entrepreneurial spirit in you. You are so smart. You are one of the brightest young ladies I've ever known. You are the best husband I've ever known. You are the best wife that I've ever known. And I'm going to continue to build you up because you're not going to be what somebody else told you that you are. You are going to be who God says you are. You are going to be above and not beneath. You are going to be the head and not the tail. You are going to be the first and not the last. You are not going to give up. You are not going to be what everybody else said you are going to be. I don't care what your great grandfather was. I don't care what your grandfather was. I don't care what your father was. But as your mama, as your daddy, I'm calling you out. I'm calling that spirit up out of you and I'm placing the spirit of God in you. I'm calling you who you will be. Because let me go to the other side of it. Because God will respond to our complaints. Especially when we sit up there and complain about something that he has done. Because we will end up showing how ungrateful we are, how selfish we are, and how self-centered we are. And in that, God will end up responding to our complaints. And when he responds to our complaints, we will not like his response. Because in Numbers chapter 11 and 1, it states, And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. And the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. You wonder why sometimes your circumstance gets bad and continues to get worse? It's because in the midst of all of it that's going on, instead of praising God, instead of praying, we end up complaining. You wonder why things get bad, why the circumstance and situation gets worse? It's because instead of praising, we complain. And before we say anything, we have to look at it in this way. Ask yourself some questions. And say, we have to ask, is what I'm about to say going to be beneficial? Is it going to build somebody up? Or is it going to tear them down? Is it going to help the circumstance? Or is it going to make the circumstance worse? Is it going to encourage them? Or is it going to discourage them? Because a lot of times we have, <laughs> we open up our mouths and we speak before our brain is actually in motion. We react to the circumstance instead of taking a moment and saying, let me sit back and think about it. Let me sit back and let me think about this thing before I say something. And sometimes we need to sit up there and pray and say, Lord, give me the response that I need. Because in Colossians 3 and 17, it states, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father by him. It says, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. We have to realize that we are not what someone says we are. So you can text your neighbor, because I know you're on the line, and tell them, watch what you call me. Text your friend and say, watch what you call me. Because in this day and in this time, we have to realize that we are, I am a survivor. Because we can, we will, and we must survive. We have to encourage ourselves and say, we can, we will, we must survive. We have to continue to say, we can, we will, we must survive. 
even in this circumstance with what we face right now, no matter what is going on, we have to turn around and say, we can, we will, we must survive. Even when they continue to feed us and give us bad news of the outbreak, we have to turn around and say, we can, we will, we must survive. We have to say we cannot give up. We, can, we have come too far. We have been through too much. I've dealt with too much in my life. I've gone through too many circumstances. I've had too many headaches. I've had too many heartaches. I've suffered too much. I've endured too much. I've lost too much. And to have this take me out, I don't think so. We can, we will, we must survive. I've prayed too much. I've fasted too much. I've sacrificed too much. Too many long nights, too many early mornings, too many going to school, this, that, and the other. I've sacrificed, and God let this take me out. I don't think so. Let me throw in a towel with this. I don't think so. I'm not giving up right now. I'm going to put my hands to the plow. I'm going to get behind that car and we're going to drive this thing all the way out. I'm not going to give up right now. I'm not going to throw in the towel right now. I am. I will be a survivor. Because verse 11 says, not that I speak in respect of want. For I have learned in whatsoever states I am therewith to be content. Meaning that no matter what's going on around me, no matter what's happening, I'm content with where I am at. I'm not content with just sitting here and doing nothing, but I am content to the place where that you know what? I don't need anything else, but this is not going to cause me to crawl underneath the table and sit up there and suck my thumb and throw in the towel and die. I'm not going to do it. My grandmother been through too much. My grandfather been through too much. They had it worse off than I do. And this is just a virus. This is just a downturn in the economy. And to give up now, I don't think so. Lost a job, I'm not giving up. I have learned in whatsoever state I am in, therewith to be content. Where it says, for I have learned, that means you have been through it. You have experienced something already. And so since I have learned, that means that as I am right now, right here, I can reference what I have been through in my past to help me while I'm in this present circumstance. I can pull from the past to help me right where I am at. Even though this is uncharted territory, even though this is un... Problems and circumstances, situations... And I can't deal with it, but I've learned from my past. Even if you want to put it this way, I'm in third grade. I remember what I did when I was in first grade. I remember what I did when I was in second grade. So I can take the experiences from first and second grade and help me while I'm in third grade. I'm 45. I remember what I went through when I was 40. I'm 30. I remember what I went through when I was 20. And I can use that to help me to survive and to thrive in this circumstance and situation. Because if I can get through that, I can get through this. Now, if you're not able to understand that, if you're not able to get with that, I like to let everybody know. I love music. And there was a song that came out years ago by a group named Destiny's Child. The chorus of the song says, I am a survivor. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to work harder. I'm a survivor. I'm not going to make it. I'm going to make it. I will survive. Keep on surviving. Let me tell you again. I'm a survivor. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to work harder. I'm a survivor. I'm going to make it. I will survive. Keep on surviving. And let me encourage you today. Even as we face this uncertain times, 
we will and we can survive. And even as we are going through, I'm here to tell you to enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride. Because you know what? When we get through this, we'll end up saying, you know what? I made it through, and I thank God that I made it through. And I can raise my hands. I can shout for joy. I can praise the Lord. I can say, God, I made it. And we have to realize that even if we don't get the checks from the government, you know what? We can still say we will survive and I will enjoy the ride. Even if we don't get our job back, we will say I still survive and I enjoyed the ride. Even if we lose our house, we can turn around and say I will survive and I will enjoy the ride. Even if we lose our car, we can say I will survive and I'll enjoy the ride. Even if we lose our money, we can say I will survive, I will enjoy the ride. Even if we lose our mind, we can turn around and say I will survive and I'll enjoy the ride. Lose your friends, lose your mother, lose your father, lose your dog, your cat, your canary. You can still say we will survive. We will enjoy the ride. And let me tell you this. We will still survive and enjoy the ride because as long as I got Jesus, I know that everything is already all right. We will still survive and enjoy the ride because as long as I got Jesus, I know that everything is already all right. I don't even have to wait till the battle is over. I can shout right now. I can give God the glory right now. Even though I haven't got to the end, I already know what the end is going to be. I already know that God has made a way. He has opened up doors. He has closed doors. He has done great things. All I have to do is just catch up to what he has done because he's doing it and he does all things well he has all power in his hands he has all things in his hands if he wanted to bat an eyelash and heal the whole nation he could do it because we have to realize that these things only come to get our attention because we have to remember that Jesus said, I prayed for you, that your faith would fail not. He also said that in this life, you will have troubles. But I prayed for you. I fasted for you. I died for you. I took three nails and a crown of thorns on my head. I took lashes just for you. So then you don't have to go through without having any strength on the inside. I endured all of this so that I can give you the strength that you need so that you can get through what you are facing right now here in this life. And I've given you promises after promises after promises because my promise is yea and Amen. You can take it to the bank and you can cash it in, baby. It's not rubber made. It's, mm, it is mm, mm, good. And if he said it's going to happen and he's going to send it and he's going to bless you, then realize that he's going to bless you and that it's already on the way. We just have to catch up to it. We don't be not dismayed. What air be tied? God will. God has already taken care of each and every one of us. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will. God has already taken care of us. And continue to bless his name in the middle of all of this. Continue to lift him up in the middle of all of this. Because we are in this together. And let the record show that the word of God gives us promises 
concerning our circumstances. And it says in Hebrews 13 and 5, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That is a promise from God to us. In Psalms 27 and 10, God says, when my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. In Jude chapter 20 and chapter 1, verse 24, it states, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence of exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be honor, majesty, dominion, and power, now and forevermore. In Isaiah 59 and 19, the B part, it says, When the enemy shall come in like a flood. The Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Oh, but also in Psalms 91 and 2, it says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Let me repeat that again. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Some trust in Buddha, some trust in Muhammad, some trust in a job, some trust in a man, some trust in a sugar daddy, some trust in a pimp, some trust in the government, but we will trust in the name of the Lord because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are saved. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Also in Psalms 91 and 15, I love this one. He says, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. How many of us? have been in circumstances and situations where our brother or our sister, our mother or our father has left us by ourselves. But I'm here to tell you that God says, I will be with him. I will be with you in trouble. I'll be right there by your side. I will lead you. I will guide you. I will direct you as long as you continue to trust in me, as long as you continue to believe in me, as long as you continue to call on me, I'll be right there. Call on Jesus. He will answer prayers. Call on Jesus. He will answer prayers. And all you have to do is say, I'm going to sit back. I'm going to enjoy the ride. I'm going to thrive in this circumstance. I'm going to thrive in it no matter what. I'm not going to say, how long is it going to be until this thing is going to be over? I'm going to sit up there and say, you know what? God, you blessed me yesterday. You kept me yesterday. I know you're going to keep me today. So ride on, King Jesus. Ride on. All you got to do is show me where you lead me. I will follow. I'll go with you all the way. Hold on to the reins. Hold on to the steering wheel. Sit back and enjoy the ride. God is leading us, God is guiding us, God is directing us. You can be just like Miss Daisy, sitting back in the back of the car, sitting up there saying, okay, where are we going now? How are we going to get there now? And God says, you know what? Just sit back and enjoy the ride because I'm going to be right here with you. And you want to turn around and say, but God, pump the brakes. God says, no, it ain't no time for pumping the brakes. Ain't no stopping now. We on the move. God says, I'm going to get you where you need to go. Just sit back and enjoy the ride. You say, Pastor, how can I enjoy the ride? I can tell you this. By changing your mindset, by changing your outlook of the circumstance and the situation, and you begin to give God the glory in the midst of all of it and that will cause you to enjoy the ride because I like to ride roller coasters I really do I like to ride roller coasters they, they are fun I love going on them faster high switch all this that and the other jerking the turn there jerking the turn there going backwards going forwards I, I love it I love it. I don't sit up there and scream. I sit up there and laugh and I smile with my eyes wide open, take my glasses off because I don't want to lose them. And I'm sitting there enjoying the ride. 
But I've seen a couple times on Facebook where people get on a roller coaster and next thing you know, all of a sudden they sit up there praying, Lord Jesus, please keep me while I'm on this ride. Lord God, if you keep me, I'll go to church. Lord God, if you keep me, if you save me as I'm going through this, I'll go back to church. Please, Lord God. And next thing you know, the thing takes off and they're like, ah, Jesus. And I'm telling you, it's your outlook of when you on that ride. Are you going to enjoy the ride or are you going to scream in fear and anxiety? Because depending on how the ride is, it's going to have a bunch of twists. It's going to have a bunch of turns. It's going to be up. It's going to be down. It's going to turn inside. It's going to turn outside. You're going to go for a loop. You're going to go. And some of them even have the place where you go all the way forward. And then all of a sudden you got to go through the same exact way, but you got to go. Oh, my God. Woo! I have to stand up. Because sometimes we have to realize this. That if we go through something and we do not enjoy it, we do not learn the lesson, we end up having to go back through the same circumstance, the same situation backwards to only turn around to go through it all over again. So why in the world would I want to go through something to turn around to go through it all over again? Why won't I learn the lesson the first time so then I don't have to repeat the same thing over and over again? I know there's a lot of people that don't like to repeat first grade, second grade, third grade, uh, history one, history two, all that stuff, algebra one, algebra two, geometry. We don't want to repeat it. We want to get rid of it and get through it the first time. And in order to get through it, you got to enjoy it. You got to enjoy it. And sometimes we're going to kick and scream through the whole thing. But you got to enjoy the ride. You got to enjoy the ride. Because God says, I'm, I'm right there with you. You may think that you are in a single car on the roller coaster by yourself. But you have to realize, God said, I'll never leave you. So sitting right there next to you in the car is God right there. And he's whispering into your ear saying, listen, I got your back. Just hold on to my hand. I'm right here with you. Doesn't matter how fast this ride's going. No matter what the turns, no matter what's going on, I'm right here with you. There is a prize at the end. You just, we just, we just going to sit back and we're going to enjoy this ride. And then next thing you know, a peace and a calm comes over your life. And you have peace with God and you have a peace of God. And you say, oh, my goodness, I never knew I could get through something like this. I never knew I could go through this with my hands raised. I never knew I could go through this giving God the glory. I never knew I could deal with this circumstance. I never knew I could deal with this situation and give God the glory in the midst of it all. Oh, no, I, I, I can't believe that. But God sitting right there next to you says, yes, you can. Because you could say I'm a survivor. And I will, I shall, I must survive this circumstance. No matter what's happening, I'm getting through this. And as I get through this, I'm going to enjoy the ride. So text your neighbor as you're driving by, as you're sitting there. Tell them, sit back and enjoy the ride. No matter how long this thing's going to be, sit back and enjoy the ride.